Um, Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 2. Here is what the word of our Lord says. It reads as this, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good, acceptable, and perfect. Praise be to God for the reading of his word. You all can go ahead and have a seat. It's interesting as I think about the idea of commitment Within our culture today, it's, it's interesting. There's a, a turning tide, per se, with the way in which we imagine, envision, understand commitment. Um, commitment's interesting because um, you might tell someone that you are going to do something, but it seems like more so now than ever, um, people renege on that which they've committed to. Uh, you can even hear this in soft contracts that are made verbally with, with jobs. Oh, yeah, I plan to be here five years. We understand life happens, but uh, more so than ever, people leave in and out of jobs quickly. Maybe it's just to hang out with somebody. You, you reach out to them. You say, hey, can we get up on Friday night? And you give it as a commitment verbally, but it's really a soft commitment within your heart because you'll take any out to get out of that commitment. Um, just for the, the note on that, just... Tell somebody you don't want to hang out with them. Be real. Um, don't lie. Um, but that's besides the point. In that, this commitment, right? We, we see it happen in so many different ways. Flakiness is at an all-time high, if we can use that terminology there. Some of us know it. You, you're flaky. You halfway want to step into something, and you ah, might be there because you don't want to commit. It's interesting as I think about that, that because for us to counteract that, you have to actually be all in on things. And being all in on something actually requires risk. It actually requires sacrifice. It requires commitment to actually building something, whether that's a relationship or, or building equity within a space. It doesn't matter what it is, but it presents high risk, but also presents the highest reward. It's interesting because I think what I'm trying to point at right now was that our, our terms of commitment, we want commitment with high reward, but with us having to give the least amount as possible or the least amount of commitment to something to gain that high reward. We only do it when we feel as if it might benefit us more so and then it actually might benefit even others. I want to challenge us this morning to think about this notion of, of commitment Because in this passage, I think Jesus is actually challenging us through um, the writer to think about our our commitment. To to think about whether or not we are all in or not, and if we're willing to to give it all for for Jesus. If we're willing to to lay it all down for him. This morning, I want to challenge you. I want you to to consider your own priorities, to, to consider your own commitments, and whether or not there are obstacles in your life that stops you or is prohibiting you right now from giving yourself fully away to God. Again, I don't know how that's going to hit you this morning, but I know it's a struggle that we all can have. Here this morning, I want to add the text for our exchange. Uh, give yourself away. I think it's interesting here because in verse 1, As Paul begins his case, he says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, that that idea of appealing, he's he's beginning to to make a case. He's he's trying to draw people in to seeing the the grandeur, the glory of actually following after Jesus. And he he truly wants these believers to, to give themselves away to God. I don't think he's doing this with a hesitant sense of nature. I, I think he understands the big ask that it is. I think we can even romanticize within our minds that we we want to be used by God, we want to commit to things for God, and we we want to see him move and work. But like we treat other people or other commitments, we kind of halfway want to do it. Well, when it's convenient for my schedule, I really will commit. Or if there's not another better option on the table, then I'll commit. 
If I cannot create something else in my life to, to be of more value to me, then I'll really give myself fully away. I think this is why he's making the appeal this morning, even to us as a church family here. We need to understand this because Paul understood that based on the claims that Jesus has revealed himself to all of creation through his incarnation, that in his revealing of himself, that he makes himself known and that we can walk with him in this relationship, that that relationship assumes a response. That because he came and he he dwelt among us, he died on the cross, he rose from the grave, if that is true, then there's a counter response. Yes, it is walking in that relationship with him, but part of that relationship is one measure with much commitment and sacrifice. It's a sense of you saying that I, I want to lay down my own priorities. I want to give up those things that I've placed before Jesus. I want to lay them down at the cross, and I want to follow after him. And that this is where the notion of you giving yourself away comes up because you're laying down the old life because he's pinned it to the cross, and you're walking in this newness of life that he's now giving you. And part of walking in that newness of life is you offering up all of yourself to him. And as you're seeking to offer up all of yourself to him, it's important that we remember the reason why this claim is true for you to even begin to consider the appeal is because of how Jesus has revealed himself as a sacrificial lamb who died on your behalf, who seeks to give you a a, a new life and a new purpose. And the good news of the gospel then should compel us to to participate in this vision of self-sacrifice for our own lives. See, many of us will will focus greatly on, man, I cannot believe all that Jesus has done for me. That he bore the weight of the sin of the world on the cross. He had my, my life in mind. Praise God for that work. He is truly awesome because he is a selfless God in that. That he came in in humility. As Philippians says, he did not count equality of God a thing to be grasped, but he, he humbled himself in his descension to earth to bring about this work of redemption. And that is good news for us. But if that is true, if that is something that is sure for our lives, how then should we respond? Should we see it as an act worthy of self-sacrifice from ourselves? Should our response to his work be, well, if you've given this much for me, I want to give this much back to you. And I think this is important because I think many of us are grateful for Christ's work and how his redemption is significant for our lives. But you don't first give him Your first offering, you give him the overflow of that which you have. Some of y'all need to chew on that this morning because for for some of you, you say you want to be committed to God and you, you want to hear appeal because Jesus came and lived and dwelt among you, but you only give him the extra that you have in life, the bandwidth that you think he deserves based on you doing everything else first, and then you'll give to God. He gets the overflow of that which you have not the first, not all of you, but just the overflow. See, I think that is why this appeal is important because as he is making this appeal, it's, it's easy for us to wonder, well, God, how am I not being used by you? I, 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 my heart wants to do it, but, but I struggle too. I, I just don't have the time. I, I just don't have the energy. I, I just don't have the space in my life to be able to, to serve you in the way that, that I want it to. Because you're, you're looking at it from the vantage point of the overflow, the extra, not from the beginning. So I think this framing is, is life shifting in this way. Because when you understand that Christ gave himself up for you with this, this purpose and this intentionality, you understand that he then deserves your first allegiance. That he doesn't want the last, the little bit that you have. He wants your best. I think this is important. I think about this even, you know, as a father and as a a husband, I can give a lot for other people, but it's 
problematic if I'm only giving my best to everyone else, but not to my family first, right? Uh, I think it's important for us to think about this, even in light of our faith, because if we are posturing our lives and ordering it in such a way that we want to give Jesus our first, and then the outflow of us sacrificing for him is going to then impact our family and then the other spaces around us. It's not even the inverse, because sometimes even your family, your work, can then come over Jesus above him, and you struggle to even give him your first. You know, but my family needs me, my friends need me. Yeah, they do need you, but they need the healthiest version of you. And the healthiest version of you is you laying down your life in a genuine pursuit of following after Jesus. Friends, I really want us this morning to consider a genuine appeal to give all of life to God. I think this is what he's doing. I think all of Romans has been setting up this foundation for this conversation. Maybe you've felt lost in the weeds at times in Romans. Well, Romans now is going to turn very practical in the theological application of these ideas that we've been talking about. But Paul is seeing everything that we've talked about theologically beforehand as fuel for your service, fuel for you living out the Christian faith. It's not just head knowledge for you to ascribe to or just statements that you should just consume. But it's challenging you to think, well, if it is true that in Christ we have this redemption, if it is true that God is working out his plan of salvation for the nations, if this is true, and he is everything that the, the text says that he is, then he's actually worthy of giving everything to. I know many of you might be hearing me right now. You've maybe heard a pastor or someone else try to give you an appeal to, to give more to God and to serve more and, and things like that. And you might be thinking right now, well, is he about just ask us to just to do more? That's not my aim this morning. My aim isn't just to get you to start checking off boxes so that you feel like you're, you're doing more for God, but I want to get down to the heart posture right now. Is your heart even open and willing to be used by God and to make yourself available? We, we understand that people have, have time crunches and, and things are happening in life, but is your first perspective or your first posture one in which where you're like, God, I just want to be used by you. Again, or do you go back to, well, God, I have a little bit of time here. How can you use me? God can provide for you the adequate amount of time to help you to navigate the days in which you have. Even in the most busy days in life, even when he provides opportunities for you to serve him, he can help you get done that which is necessary for the day. I think that's important because many of us struggle with even the mindset of saying, God, I want to be this available because it might kind of thwart plans and ideas and agendas and schedules. And and if that happens, it's going to concern you so much because you're going to be so overwhelmed and so anxious about how to make sense of your schedule in your life. One thing I'm learning more more and more every day is that um, many of the things that I schedule can wait till tomorrow. But the opportunities that God has given me to serve him come in right time and proper proportion. But that, that's hard, though, when you, when you see the list piling up. <clears throat> and so when you see an appeal like this, it becomes hard. It becomes hard for us to, to begin to understand. Can I get that water, please? <clears throat> it begins hard for us to understand. Thank you. Um, for us to truly to understand like how we can really, you know, give it all to God. And so, one, one second. So, so I'm not just saying this to you all just to, to give you just a, a random appeal, but, but I, I genuinely want you to consider whether or not your life can be adapted to be first about prioritizing Jesus and his mission. To see yourself in this way. The call to sacrificial living is not a half-hearted next best option, but it's a self-presentation that you are stepping to the place yourself and you're saying, I want to exhibit for others what it looks like to follow after God. I want to be an example of this life. Again, friends, like church, Jesus, your personal faith with him, 
It's not just the other thing that you do. But a lot of times we can treat God that way. Do you have a desire to present yourself unto God and do service for him? Or do you allow that desire to to serve him to be on the back burner? Is that that where you place serving him at? In a matter of convenience, you'll get to it later. When the opportunity comes, you'll, you'll take advantage of the moment. See, finding fulfillment in serving another purpose runs against the grain of our culture, and I think that's why he's making this case. He's like, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God. The mercies of God is him assuming this redemptive work. This is mercy that drives us here to this moment, to this posture for him to even have this conversation with them. That they've been touched by the mercy of God. Paul's been touched by the mercy of God. And you want to see other people walk with him in this journey. And this goes against the grain of culture because it's serving God versus serving self. You have to deal with that tension in your life. Now you might feel like, well, if you don't serve yourself and care for yourself adequately, you won't actually be able to serve God. But sometimes that can be part of our excuse or or reason for, for not doing much. I mean, many of you maybe have had the moment happen before where a service opportunity comes, and you're like, but I, I just need to focus on me right now. Maybe you've been in that type of holding pattern before. You've, you've taken seasons of life where you've got to be very focused on you. And, and it's interesting, though, like, because we use that language here, and, and it's a lot about the kind of self-care language. I'm not saying you shouldn't care for yourself in different ways. Um, but what that does is that it really puts you at the center of the world. And, and, and in that sometimes you can struggle to see service as something that can grow you and help give you different perspective of even yourself. It, it can be hard for us in those moments because as we think about ourselves so, so often, we can really struggle to have a vision for our lives that might have to reinform or alter even our own personal mindsets of how we serve or why we serve. This goes back to kind of the overflow statement that I made earlier. Some of us are serving God out of the overflow because we feel like it fits within the best way to primarily care for ourselves. But part of service is dependence and reliance upon God that you're actually trusting him with your body. You're trusting him with that which he's giving you for him to do something in you that you couldn't already imagine yourself, that you couldn't provide the, the adequate amount of time or space just to do on your own. This is an appeal, brothers and sisters, that you could find purpose even in serving God with all of your life. See, when you begin to find the purpose within yourself instead of God for your serving, it will always result in shorter seasons of serving. Maybe you felt this way before where you like, like I was, I was doing well, I was serving God, I was giving myself up to him, and then I got really burnt out. This is a very common conversation that I have as a pastor with people, people feel burnout. Now you can run yourself too rampant and do too much stuff in your life. But a lot of people's burnout is because of the source of nourishment that they're, they're going to. So many times what happens is people, you know, they start growing spiritually, they start taking steps, and then they get excited. They want to, God, I want you to use all this energy. Then what happens is they get into this this mindset and this mode of starting to to do everything, that in the process of trying to do everything for God, they then are removed from their source of nourishment. They stop spending time in his word. They stop going to the gospel as a sense of, of transformation and encouragement in their lives. They stop looking to Jesus to be the anchor of their lives. And they start running on fumes. So the running on fumes leads to the burnout is not serving God. But, but in our minds, though, in an effort to not be burnt out, for us to, to not commit in these ways, we want to avoid that feeling. So we begin to compartmentalize serving God because we don't want that to happen. Now, please do not hear what I'm not saying. I'm not saying that people have not ever truly been burnt out by the grind of life and they are struggling in moments. I'm not saying that. 
But many of us, though, our capacity to serve God has been limited because you are running off of the self-fume that you fume, fuel that you are providing for yourself. You're, you're doing it from within. Well, I just don't feel like serving today. I feel like I've, I've served a lot lately, other people. Again, when you're starting to use those phrases, you're starting with the self. You don't see it as an opportunity. But also you don't see your life in a way that it's a fragrant offering to God as an act of service. That it's not about you pushing yourself forward. I think with this, though, Paul is, is hoping for a long vision for service to God. Not just to have a few months where you were crushing it, but he, he wants you to endure. And the key to endurance is you do it by the mercy of God. You do it by resting in him. Even in the hard seasons, by offering all of your life to God, there's going to be troubling moments. There's going to be hardship. There's going to be moments when you feel bruised and battered through the life of serving other people and them not loving you back well and not, not caring for you. Showing up when you feel like others aren't showing up. There's going to be many opportunities for you to serve God in this way where you feel like you might be on an island, but the way for you to endure is in Christ, in him being your source of nourishment. You remembering your union with him and the life that he gives you. That's what helps you to keep going in the moments when you feel like you're struggling to serve. You feel like you're struggling to give all of your, yourself away to him. Friends, will you welcome reflection on giving God all of your life? Will you even consider a, a genuine appeal? Or do you just assume that people who are calling you to, to a greater life just have something to, to get out of you? I, I really want you to think about your own life and are you laying it all down? Are you, are you holding back from God? Let me raise the stakes here. Will you move beyond just self-reflection on this this morning and begin to welcome others into your contemplation? Maybe allow people to, to ask the hard questions of your life. Allow them to, to speak into your life of whether or not they feel like you're holding back from God. You're only offering certain elements of your life over to him. Again, that can look different for different people. Whether it is you feel like you, you only will give God an hour of your life on Sunday mornings, but if it goes beyond that, it's too much. Or, or whether it has to be time that is scheduled out for you to really to give something to God because your schedule is so jammed that you can't slide anything else into it. Maybe you're unwilling just to be flexible in general to be able to answer the call. When someone is, just, is in need, when there's an opportunity to care for others that you can't even make yourself available in that way. See, as I think about this this morning and as I'm too trying to make a genuine appeal for you, I want to, to see us as a church grow and what it looks like to present our bodies as a living sacrifice to him. Friends, present your, yourself as a living sacrifice unto him. It's important to remember this is not unto the church. This is not unto ministry leaders. It's not for a sense of people pleasing. This is not why you're, you're trying to present yourself as a living sacrifice. But you understand what he's first done for you. He sacrificed himself for you, and so you're, you're following the path of Jesus in this. And some might even say, well, that's, that's a cost that's too high. That's okay this morning. It's okay for you to, to admit that. It's actually better that you would start there if you feel like the cost is actually too high because you can then know where you're actually at. And I, th I think that's the part that people struggle with in their faith at times is that they love the relationship element. They want that. I want to know him and walk with him. I want to know that he's on my side and that he's done this work for me. But if you laying down your life, that part is the, 
the harder acts, the harder cross to carry. Because in you laying down your life and seeing it as a self-sacrifice, that might mean you give up that which you prioritize. That, that might mean that you have to reconsider how you steward your own body. See, this is hard for us because in our understanding of human autonomy and understanding of uh, free will and things like that, you're like, I have my body and I can do whatever I want with it. In many ways you can. You can do whatever you want. You genuinely can. Um, but what you have to reckon with is, is that in your choices, in your decisions that you make, you need to understand that if you are serving God and you're saying that you're trying to live all of life under him, then it can't just be you saying, well, I just do whatever I want with my body within my time and within my proper proportion. Those, those statements are actually contradictory. It's that, no, God created us with, with purpose and intentionality, and he made us for a relationship, and we get to walk in this relationship with him. My, my relationship has been restored in Christ, and because of that, I'm actually accountable to the creator. And in light of that, I want to to live for him. This is hard because when people think about human autonomy um, and what we can do and what we should be able to do, this is where the rub comes. Because what happens if you don't like the life that God calls you to? What if you don't like the path that God takes you down and he's calling you to, to lay it down for the sake of his glory? whether it might be your passions at times, whether maybe it's your work at times, maybe it's even your family at times for the sake of serving him. What happens when, when God's will, God's plans for your life and your opportunity to serve him runs against the grain of what you find good, what you hunger for? What happens when your hunger and what you desire needs to be transformed and conformed to the mindset that Christ has for you so you can actually see yourself as a living sacrifice. That's a hard process. I, I know it is. This, this language of sacrifice is stemming from the Old Testament, which many of us might be aware of, but they offered many sacrifices in worship of God. It was to help to seek to provide a sense of, of a fragrance offering, but also a sense of uh, payment for transgressions and actions against God. But they literally laid down the life, even sometimes of animals, for the sake of rectifying relationship with God. So we know that Christ has come and laid down his life for us, and so we're not doing it in that way, but this imagery is pretty important. This one of sacrifice. Are we willing to lay it all down for the sake of walking with him? Would you be willing to sacrifice your life right now with where it's at? Maybe you feel like you are in a healthy situation, you're doing everything right, but if, if God wanted to, to grow you, that he, he's like, I might take this away from you because it's actually a distraction from you. It might actually not be the best thing for you right now and take you to somewhere else to grow you. Some of you have felt that, whether that's a career shift, you, you, you're, you're moving forward in a vocation, and you feel like God is closing the doors, you can't go any, any um, forward anymore in this, this area. You feel like he removes it from you because he has a different path for you. Will you trust him with your life in that way? Maybe it's with your relationships that you have in your life. You've built a life of relationships with people who don't always maybe benefit you or help you to grow. And maybe part of you growing in your faith and you offering yourself up is you laying those relationships down. Ah, but we've been tight for 20 years. Is your life a living sacrifice? Is your body... A living sacrifice, I'm going to get to that in a moment, what, it, what he means by that in this text, but are you willing to lay it all down even if it costs you much? When we think about this, it might lead some of us to, to clench our, our fists in certain ways, 
One, because you've been fighting with God for so long to not give up certain things in your life. Some of you know it, that there's certain things in your life that are prohibiting you from laying it all down. And maybe some of you have even said to God, you could have everything but this. God, you, you, look, I'll give you this area of my life. You know, you can, you can have my work, but, but, but my family, I need my family to be like this. God, look, look, I'll, I'll give you Sundays, but please don't touch my, my Saturday mornings. You know, I have a routine. I got to get ready for college football to come on. You know, I got to wake up, you know, it, whatever it is. But, but, but please don't take that. All of us need a sense of self-reflection. All of us need to be willing to lay it down. This term bodies that he's using there is a holistic seat, uh, source of sacrifice. It's assuming our soul and our physical body. It's both realities. It's not just giving him all of your, your heart, but all of your lifestyle. All of you. This is not just merely what you would call religious actions. Not just you coming to church, just not you reading your Bible. I'll give some time to you in that. But do you see your life 24-7 as an offering? Do you see yourself as a vessel in that way to be used by him? This is what he means by a sense of living sacrifice. You're not being laid down to, to be killed there, but you are a living vessel for the glory of God. And he's making this appeal so that you will see your life in that way. That you don't see yourself as, as dying, but you see yourself as living. This, this is so important because some of us see the, the death of certain things in our lives to be laid down to serve God as a, as a source of decay in your life. That you're losing something. That something's being taken away from you. But if you see it in that way, you'll struggle to, to prioritize God in your life because you won't see it as a, an opportunity for growth and you actually finding life. See, some of us are afraid of that because you don't know what that life could actually be like. It makes you nervous because you like what you know now. Maybe for some, it, it makes you cautious because you can have more control over your life now. But the moment that you say, God, hey, I'm, I'm a living sacrifice. Use me how you will. Whether that's whatever neighborhood I move to, how I serve in my, my community, in my church, how I serve you within the home, outside of it. I just want to be used by you. That might mean that you change. And you might be worried that you might not even like the version of you that you change into. And that even can show you that you struggle to even trust God in doing a work in your life. This is ironic in many ways, though, because you can trust him to bring about redemption and to save you from your sins. You can trust him to, to make all things new in the end. But you can't trust him in the process of making you new today. See, as we think about Everything being intertwined in all of our lives being given to him it helps us to, to see that all of life is worship. Worship is more than just the songs that we sing, but it encompasses every action, thought, and emotion. We are always worshiping someone or something. See, this idea of presenting yourself as a living sacrifice and that being holy and acceptable to God should anchor us because when we see this as an act of worship, we will become much more confident in laying down our life because we see its purpose. And I think that's important for us this morning. What is your purpose for the life that you live? Is your purpose toward God, for him, or yourself. See, God is worship when we actually find satisfaction in him and give ourselves over to him. God is glorified when we are willing to give it all, lay it all down. 
But the only way that that will happen is if you allow your mind to be transformed to live out the will of God. Scripture is pretty convincing when it talks about our temptation to be conformed to the world and how our minds can be deeply shaped by everything that we consume. Um, What we consume really determines how we parent, how we view marriage, how we understand the workplace, like the, the world, what we consume really does impact us in it more than what we can realize. But the question this morning is, what is going to determine how you steward your life? What is going to determine that t- today? When it says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. This is a challenge for us to not look within ourselves for a sense of conformity to the world, but we need to look to to Jesus to do a renewing work within our minds because we will naturally drift. We, We will drift to want to conform to the standards around us and not actually look to Jesus as the vision, as the God. Maybe you this morning are like, man, I I want to change my heart posture. I I really want to be renewed. And maybe some of y'all right now are struggling with that. You haven't wanted it. You haven't wanted to lay it all down for him. You've created different obstacles in your own life to, to really serve Jesus. My sermon will not convince you. I'm okay with that. I can't. I cannot convince you through my words to give yourself away to God. But it's the spirit of living God. If you seek him, that he can begin to do a transforming work in your own life and in your own heart, that your mind can be renewed. I think that's hard for some of us because through your own will, your own grit. Some of y'all got to grind to y'all. Some of y'all have a will to y'all. Some of y'all are just really stubborn in general, but like, you're like, I don't really want to change and I don't desire to change. And like, you know, I'm, I'm okay with that. But, but in these moments, it, it's hard for you because as you think about this, like, well, how do I change? That can happen today. It, it can happen by you saying, God, I need your help to transform my mind, to, to renew it, to, to remember that gospel that's so affectious, that drew me into relationship with you, bring me that passion to want to live my life for you in such a way that it's all about your glory and that my body, my, my soul, holistically is being laid down for you. Set up me aflame again in this way. Like, you, you might need that today. This transformation isn't going to come without you placing Jesus and his gospel at the center of your life. Without you understanding that his redemption is good news for you two hours from now and throughout the rest of the week. You're not going to be able to continue to persevere in this life without the constant reminder that Jesus is enough, that his grace is sufficient, and that it can renew and transform you every day. See, it's the gospel, the message that Jesus brings that can bring us the sense of renewal and transformation that will lead us to this act of worship that brings ultimate glory to God. Some might be tempted this morning to even hear my words and the idea of you giving off a pleasing fragrance to God is Satisfying, that's maybe the people pleaser in you. You just want to do what's right so that he sees you as good, so that he finds you acceptable. Don't do it for that motivation this morning. Friends, I I really want to encourage you to to wrestle with this within your heart. Truly and, and purely from a heart of worship. Because even as we sung earlier, he he is this awesome God. He's marvelous, he's glorious, and he's worthy of our praise. And because of that, we want and desire 
to serve him. See, I think when we approach it in this way, you will more often and more consistently find renewal in God because you're always seeking after him in worship. It's interesting, though, because the text, as it closes up in verse 2, it kind of leads us to begin to have a conversation about us discerning the will of God for our lives and how we steward our bodies. And that's a great, great theological question that we could spend much time on. What is the will of God for your life? But I think you can get so caught up in trying to determine the, his will as if it's the dot that you need to find for your life when he's just actually trying to get you to catch a vision for faithfulness to him and a willingness to be used by him, that you'll, you'll just order your steps in a way that you'll take the small steps in following after him instead of trying to, to micro-size the dot to know specifically what God wants you to do. I say it in that way because some of us have been immobile for God because you're looking for that exact will for your life in the exact way that he wants to use your life and your body to serve him instead of offering everything. See, and when that happens, that's when we're missing out on the intentions, even in the text, to set ourselves before him, to offer it all, regardless of wherever he takes us, and he is going to, to guide us. See, the will of God is not abstract for our lives. It's faithful steps of service to God in the mundane of life. Do you want to know God's will for your life? It's to follow Jesus. To catch a vision. And to begin to actually take steps Stop looking for the grander way for you to be used by God and offer your life fully to him in the simple things. See, God will begin to use you in in ways that you might call quote-unquote greater when you can actually do the basics. And I'm not saying that to be offensive in that, but and I know we feel special when we we feel like we have this particular thing that we know we're supposed to do in our calling, in our vocation. But this challenge is for the the church to to recall that we all have this same call. You need to remember it. By the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. All of your life. Unto God, that is the opportunity that we have. You will figure out his will in that process. This morning, as I think about us giving ourselves away to him, here's where I want to leave you at. What is stopping you from relinquishing an area of your life over to him? What are the hurdles and the roadblocks in your life right now from your entire being being given to him. Whether it's hurt from the past, whether it's your schedule, whether it's even just a perspective shift. Maybe it's a hardened heart. Maybe you've lost joy. Whatever it might be, I want to challenge you today. Don't just to walk out of here with a sense of resentment. But I want you to lay it down at the foot of the cross. I I want to encourage you to to leave here with a desire to to lay it all down. So we're going to pray that that would be the case for us. We're going to trust Jesus and his grace to do a renewing work in us, knowing that despite our imperfections, despite our mistakes, that he's died to redeem us from our sins, and that's good news for us. Now, this is just the the call and response element to we're responding to him and the call of the work he's already done in us. We're living out this life for his glory. Pray for me. Father, as we come before you right now, many of us might have 
areas of our lives that we are just holding back from you. We're clutching it tight because we don't want to see anything change here. Father, maybe it's because we've learned to control the situation. Maybe because we're just content. Maybe we're complacent. But we ask that you would help us to not be complacent this morning. We, we ask that you would, you would guide us through your spirit to, to understand that we need to give all of ourselves to you. That we would understand that our, our life is not our own, but it belongs to you. Lord, help that to not be a problem to us. Lord, even as I maybe said that, that there's some that, that maybe struggle with letting go and allowing you to guide them. Father, if anyone has that mindset, I pray that you would help them this morning. Lord, I pray for those who are struggling right now, that they would find a sense of renewal in you. The roads of life can be tough. We can get hurt along the way, whether that's from others or for things that have happened from within our own lives and our own hearts. But Father, I pray that with a clear conscience, we can come before you knowing that, Lord, we're trying our best to lay it all down for you. Lord, if there's areas of our own lives that we we need to repent of this morning, help us to do that. Help us to not have distractions that, that keep us from prioritizing you. Father, whether the outcome of this is that Some of us need to have family meetings after this or we need to have a conversation with our boss about how we're becoming so consumed by our work. Or whether we need to be open up with an accountability partner because we've been just going through the motions. Lord, we know that you see deep within our hearts. We know that you know where we're actually at. Help some of us to be honest maybe for the first time today. Lord, for those who are feeling the weight of this, Lord, I pray that they would see that in Jesus, the fullness of redemption is accomplished, that they're not a lost cause, even if they've been distracted for years, that that you're not done with them, even if they've been serving false idols in their lives. your power that you rose from the grave is actually good news for them right now because you can make this area new in their life Lord for those who just feel stubborn right now I pray that you would soften their heart Lord, I pray that even for those who feel stubborn right now, that even if it's just a a small step they take today, Lord, I pray that you would use it. Use it in a mighty way for them to see how good you are and why you are worthy of this all of their life. So, Father, we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.